Plan A, fifth quarter, rooftops, bottles, not bottle tops. Uh, and <laughs> important stuff. Um, that's, that's what I'm going to talk about. But really, at least I'm going to mention all those things. But um, really, what I'm going to share with you is a lifelong passion, um, which started with me as a child and still burns to this day. Uh, and it's not what you're thinking. Um, it actually is composing and the, uh, the it's it's something I've been doing pretty much all my life it's a bit of an obsession um, my sons are so I've got grown up sons now and you know they quite often come up to me and say dad what are you listening to what are you and they don't mean what's on my Spotify playlist or, or yes. anything like that they mean what's going on in there at the minute because like me they and I all have music going on 100% of the time. There's pluses and minuses to that because sometimes I can be talking to somebody and what's going on in there might be a bit more interesting. <laughs> <laughs> so I get this kind of vague, vacant look. You can really get yourself in trouble. Anyway, um, so music on my head, in the head, all the time. Um, basically, you know, when I was younger, I. Uh, I listened to my dad playing the piano, organ, conducting everything from musicals and church choirs and the police choir and, and, and all sorts of stuff. Um, and I was just fiddling around on the piano a lot. And I, to this day, I'm a really crap pianist because I go to piano lessons and I hadn't practiced what I should have practiced mm -hmm. between them because it was far more fun doing playing what I wanted to. So I kind of wrote a song, I suppose, around the age of seven, something like that. And it, it went on from there. And uh, I suppose teenage years were all about these things, guitars, synthesizers, I was so lucky my mate built, um, I mean, this is years and years ago, my mate built a synthesizer around what I wanted. We were playing in a rock band at the time, and I said, well, can I have a fuzz box? Yeah. Can I have a wild rock pedal? Go, go and get a practical electronics magazine and work out how to do this with transistors. So we were probably the first band in Exeter ever that was, was playing synthesizers. Scrapyard percussion friends of going into scrapyards and getting brake blocks and uh, metal hub caps, which they had in those days, and, and, and stuff. And the tape news was getting loads of old uh, second hand tape recorders and putting them around the room and putting a long loop of tape going around through, um, I don't know, bits of wood sticking up, bits of you know, broom handles and, and that, and all these different loops going around at different speeds and, and doing crazy stuff. So um, I guess as I was getting older, um, it, they were all getting um, more and more avant-garde, I suppose. And I was writing stuff with catchy titles like Inkscape and Paraphonia. I mean, it was really going to catch people's imagination. <laughs> I was going to make a fortune doing music like that, really. Um, I guess in my early 20s I did have a little bit of success. This one was uh, a BBC commission for a Radio 4 play for incidental music and, and uh, signature tune stuff. Um, and I did get some stuff played in theatres around, around the country once, even at Sadler's as well, but it was never going to pay the rent. It, it just wasn't. Um, it wasn't going to happen. So I got into teaching. Um, and this was plan A, was to teach while I got the composing career off. And actually plan A was to be a composer, and then plan B, I suppose, was to teach you to pay the rent whilst that career got off the ground. But anybody who's been teachers here, people who've done some teaching, anybody who knows about teaching knows that you just get totally, totally sucked in. So, you know, 35, 40 years later, I've had a long and enjoyable career in teaching. Um, and raised a family, um, but I wasn't, uh, wasn't doing that much composing. And through that period I did write, you know, school musicals and stuff for assemblies and stuff like that. It wasn't really satisfying me. So um, I formed a couple of duos. Um, this one is Fifth Quarter, so it's about Fifth Quarter. It's based, this song is based on uh, uh, Dungeness, actually. Still stand. A lot of pagan levels on the beam. Um, um, the 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 place where time stands still, it seems. Yeah. Changes um, really and I wrote a lot of the songs for it as 
Anyway, um, eventually, after 35 years um, or so in, in teaching and in education, I was able to go back to, uh, to Plan A. Um, and that was, I, mean, I was able to take over the time of the series. And it's quite interesting because as I started to write, I realized, I didn't plan it, but I began to realize it was a theme, or there were three themes really to the, the kind of music that I, I write. Um, I like writing stuff that places performers in different places. So, for example, um, there's a piece called Across the Isles, which is the whole range of fruits from, from the smallest piccolos right to the big base fruits and everything in between. And that, um, this one, which is to be performed in a church, you put, um, you put music stands all the way around the edges of the church and the floaters uh, move around from stand to stand, so you play a bit and then you move somewhere else and the audience are in the middle and all these sounds are just ricocheting around. And there was also uh, music for rooftops, which um, I still haven't managed to get performed because it's a bit complicated, but I really intend to. It must happen. Um, because that can say wind, uh, sorry, a brass quintet on the top of the building and three trumpets, three other trumpets on three other nearby rooftops and the audience are down below with the sound of them around them. And it will happen, but it's going to be expensive to put them on. <laughs> anyway, um, so that was that one. Uh, um, telling unusual and fascinating stories. I've written quite a few pieces now that, that tell interesting stories. I'll tell you a little bit in a minute. Um, so I'll come back to that one. Um, and the third theme is writing about themes which I think are important. That's the important stuff, really. Um, and it's things that I really care about in the film, as I said, think are important. But if I move back to telling unusual and fascinating stories, here's one that stems from a bottle. Um, I was asked to write a piece lasting just 90 seconds for um, soprano, harp and piano. So, and then I came across this amazing text. Now, 8th of May. Bottles. One, I think, was found inside a whale 
that when they cut the whale open, it was this message. Um, and they, they are extraordinary, and I've, as I say, I've written four so far. Um, I won't be able to play you all of this one, I'm just going to play a taster of this one, just to show you they're not all about ships sinking. That should be bad. No, it didn't. Let's go back. Thank you. 
so it's still a little bit under construction, but right at the bottom, this place you can sign up to get the occasional, I mean, very occasional newsletter. Just tell it because you don't bring boxes full of other to stuff, but it will tell you when there's a concert coming up. Um, and that's it. That's the Thank you. Thank you very much.